Hey, this is Eric with Snow Family Racing. Going to finally start working on the race car. Going to start doing some frame bracing in the back half behind the rear wheel. But first, yep, got to get rid of some of those Christmas boxes in the back. Anybody that has, uh, you know, project cars that have a bed, you tend to know what, uh, what I'm referring to here. It kind of is a, a collecting point for stuff. So I'm going to start by collapsing the boxes. I know that's so much fun. Don't worry, you're not going to have to sit through it on video. But uh, I'm going to get the car jacked up. We're going to probably get the slicks off and uh, start uh, getting ready to do some sizing with that. Right there. I'm going to do some bracing along the back uh, to go with the frame notch and uh, see if we can ensure we keep the back of this car from falling off. It's been a few years uh, since I did the notch and it's uh, suffered some uh, some scars because of it. But uh, you know, we're gonna fix that. Live and learn, right? So here we go, flatten boxes first and then we'll uh, get to the fun stuff. All right, got that massive pile broke down to that. And a couple of small boxes, one of them full of wrapping paper and dunnage, but you know, you guys don't care about that, but the uh, takeaway from this, you can see the bottom of the bed. <laughs> now we can get to work. So check back once I get the car jacked up, and we'll start talking about what we're doing from there. All right, welcome back to the underside of a G-Body. Uh, bottom of my El Camino, we're going to start looking at what uh, what's here and where we're headed. You can hear noises from inside the house. The kids are not happy. Uh, so, you can see, there's some of the bracing I've got. I've got to cut out with a U-bend to clear the drive shaft. Uh, that's the existing bracing. I've got that piece there. It attaches to the main... Uh, it's kind of hard to see there. Let's see if I can do it this way. It attaches to the main uh, torque box, as it's called. Uh, you can see some of the magic i got back here. This is the... Uh, Dick Miller Racing anti-hop bars. Lakewood makes a similar model. Edelbrock makes them too. But the problem is, let me move, get my flashlight and camera all held in one hand. The distance between here and the link for the upper control arm on the Edelbrocks and the Lakewoods is too tall. So that puts the instant center somewhere about 30 inches in front of the rear axle makes for a lot of tire hit, but the problem is it's really hard to control. As I've got this set up, there's two holes up there. You can sort of see it. There we go, getting there. Yep, two holes. I've got it set up in the lower hole, which gives me my instant center somewhere about 67 inches in front of the rear axle, or just under the driver's seat, from what I can math out, based on what I'm seeing. So, sorry about that, i got to hold a flashlight and a camera. Uh, what we're going to do is, I've got the cross member here, the frame, right there. We need to run a cross member straight across to the other side here. i got to get rid of those hokey little square tube braces that I tried to put in there forever ago, and they just weren't a great idea, never worked out. I'd like to run some pieces from the cross member we're going to put in place, forward to the torque box, whether that's uh, above the rear, the upper control arms at the torque box, or if I put one dead center to the center of the torque box, I can put a piece of like quarter inch plate, weld to that, up and over the differential, and come to the uh, main cross member, or another cross member here to help keep the rear end stable, and then... I'd like to kind of connect the dots between, let's do this one handed again so I can point. Whoop, there we go. I'd like to be able to connect the shock mount to the body bushing or the body mount. And then from this side of the body mount, maybe back to that body mount, maybe back here to the trailer hitch. Haven't decided yet, but ultimately I want to connect here and here somehow because I mean you can see that frame is kind of thin you can see the welds where I've got here and 
here and I got a couple more scars up at the front there. Uh, those are where I've had cracks for them that I've had to clean up and, uh, well, stop the frame from cracking because, frankly, I like the back of the car staying on the car. So this is a lot of bracing that I'm doing because it doesn't have a roll cage or roll bar, but the cross member across the back here I'd be doing anyways because it just makes good sense to you know, run another cross member, stiffen up the frame a little bit more, help resist twist. You've heard of the G-body shuffle? Well, it does it. Uh, the part of the trick that I use is the Monster inch and five-eighths, I want to say. Uh, BMR anti-roll bar under the axle variety. Uh, astute viewers will notice that's a seven and a half inch 10 bolt. Yep, I know it's a time bomb, but it's what I got. So we just keep beating on it. I've broken apart twice. I'll have to find the broken part someday and show you all, but uh, you know, that's what I got. Get the camera back on the tripod. It's what I got, so it's what we use. Thanks for watching.